Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have Tea Time. This story comes from someone who has a very strange memory from when they were around 9 years old. They were eating dinner in their room for some reason that they can't quite remember. What they do remember, however, is being sat at their dresser which had a big mirror. While sitting there, the storyteller's dad came in to check on them and asked if they wanted more tea, to which they replied yes. They picked up their empty teacup and handed it to him and watched as he walked out the door. In the next instant, they looked back over and saw their same teacup, completely full of tea, right where they had just picked up the one that was empty. They of course asked their dad about this after because what in the world is going on, and their dad said that he never came into their room at all. This story is bizarre for sure, but there's also something really eerie about it as well. I can totally see why this was one that really stuck with them. In our number 9 spot today, we have the hotel room. This story starts out with the storyteller explaining that this strange story happened when they were on a family road trip. They write, quote, We stayed at a hotel for a night. Our room was nothing more than two beds and a restroom with a big mirror across from the beds. Everyone went to sleep but me. I stayed up playing a mobile game I was addicted to at the time. At about 2am, I went to sleep. When I woke up, I noticed something was just ever so slightly off. The mirror was gone, the room had two separate bedrooms, and there were three beds. Apparently I was the only one who noticed it because my family called me crazy. Still confused to this day as to what happened. It's the small changes like this that would have me absolutely freaking out because it seems small but you know something is off and different. I don't blame them for still remembering this day and questioning what exactly happened here. In our number 8 spot today we have a new phone. Okay. This one wouldn't be the weirdest one in the world, but it has to do with the lost phone and I just can't get over how strange the place they found it was. So they write, quote, My friend and I were talking to our roommate and her girlfriend one night. Roommate had just received her new phone and was sitting in bed using it while the four of us chatted. So roommate sat her phone down while we were all still chatting. She goes to pick it back up and it's gone. Like, she had just put it down for a few minutes, tops, before she noticed that the thing had poofed. I call it for her and we can't hear it. We take the comforter and the sheets off the bed, shake them all out, we look under the bed, behind it, everywhere we can, that phone is gone. Even though we hadn't left her room at all during our conversation when the phone disappeared. We tore apart the whole apartment trying to find it. Finally, we decided to try her car. It was locked in the trunk. We live on the third floor and we were all in the same room watching her use it before it somehow teleported. There's something about finding anything in a locked trunk that seems kind of eerie and creepy, and couple this with how the whole thing is seemingly impossible, and you've got a lot of unanswered questions here. In our number 7 spot today we have a server's nightmare. This story starts out with someone explaining that it comes from a time many years ago when they worked as a server at a restaurant. The memory begins with the quintessential server panic experience where their coworker forgot to punch in the food order for a three top. If you work in the service industry, you know the absolute panic that sets in, especially if you're like me and never write things down. You can't go back and ask these people what they had when their food should already be out and on the table. It's a panic like none other. Anyway, so this coworker not only forgot to punch in the food, but also of course forgot what the order was. This storyteller was laughing at their stressed coworker who was obviously trying to figure out what to do, and while laughing at him, the storyteller threw out a random order at them. They said, quote, it was probably fried mozzarella, a cheeseburger with no onions, and chicken fingers. While the storyteller was joking and just having fun, it turns out that somehow, this was the exact order that the table had ordered and the person needed. It totally freaked the storyteller out and they even made their co-worker let them run the food to the table to make sure that he wasn't making it up. Turns out the storyteller was right and probably saved their co-worker a lot of stress and hassle. In our number 6 spot today we have the camp photo. This story comes from someone who has always remembered this strange thing that happened years ago when they were 12 years old and at camp. They explained that they were taking a photo on a disposable camera because because cell phones were still in the flip phone phase and considering the fact that they were 12, even if they weren't, it's not like they had a cell phone anyway. So with this disposable camera, they were taking a picture of two of their friends that they had made while at camp. This is all fine and well of course and honestly very cute, but it's what's seen in the photo that really has stuck with this person. They explained that in the photo, one of the friends appears twice 
in two entirely different poses. They explain that it still weirds them out every time they come across it. In our number 5 spot today we have employee of the month. This story comes from someone who almost had a premonition of sorts. They explain, quote, I was sitting in my office one day when my desk phone rang and it is my under sheriff asking me to bring him all of the reports, dispatch logs, any documentation reference to a specific case so I get it all together and start towards his office. I meet him in the hallway and hand him the paperwork. He asked me what it was. I told him it's the blank documentation you asked for. He then swears he never asked me for it, that he had just arrived and had not called my office. He was on his way down the hall to ask me to get it together. I mean, at the very least I hope he gave this person a raise because while this certainly was a weird experience, that's also the most efficient employee I've ever heard of. I hope that's not the new work standard though. Like, what do you mean you didn't anticipate my needs? In our number 4 spot today we have The Repeater. This story is one that only lasted for about an hour, but it definitely was a strange and confusing hour for the person who experienced it. Basically it started when they were watching TV with friends and they ended up landing on some sort of old 80s movie that they used to watch many years prior but hadn't seen in quite some time. All of the dialogue from the movie came flooding back to them and they remembered what each character was going to say next. Not so weird, our brains work in mysterious ways. This however seemed to open some sort of gate because when they changed channels and were trying to find something new to watch, this person was now able to recite every line of dialogue prior to it being said as if they had memorized it all, but this time it was with shows they had never seen before in their life. This then translated into them being able to predict what their friends were about to say right before them saying it. Again, this strange effect only lasted for about an hour before things return to normal, but what a strange hour that would have been. In our number 3 spot today we have the inside scoop. Maybe this is a parallel universe story or maybe this person is just a bit of a clairvoyant or something of that nature, but whatever you want to call it, this story is definitely a weird one. They write, quote, Sometimes I'll be talking to someone I've never met and very specific facts about them will pop into my consciousness out of nowhere, like this person had a golden retriever that died in 2009. Then they'll inevitably bring up the fact that I mentioned without me saying anything first, sometimes seconds later, sometimes years. This would be so strange and also so hard to navigate. You'd have all these things you seemingly happen to know about this person and now you have to avoid bringing them up until they do. It's like knowing someone's secret. That would be really weird. If you had this sort of ability would you tell people or would you keep it to yourself? In our number 2 spot today we have the wake up call. This story comes from someone who is explaining a very scary moment that their brother experienced that is kind of unexplainable. They start off by saying that it doesn't seem as though their mom believes this story but they definitely do. Most of that is because they saw their brother after this incident and could definitely tell that something had seriously spooked him. They write, quote, He was sitting in the passenger seat driving home alongside my mom. A bright green car swerved and hit them, knocking bits and pieces of glass into his arm. He jolted awake afterwards, just in time to see the green car pass them. He claimed he felt the marks the glass left afterwards too. So basically, this guy might have somehow been in a reality where this accident really did happen, and then was able to jump realities to one with a better outcome. Or perhaps he was just temporarily transported to the other one before jumping back into this one. The possibilities really are endless when it comes to the multiverse, and I can totally understand how an experience like this would have somebody pretty shaken up. Whatever really happened here, I'm just glad that this person somehow ended up in the timeline where everything is a okay. In our number one spot today, we have the boiler repairs. This story is a bit of a longer one, but it's so strange and truly like nothing I've ever heard before. It absolutely shocked me. This person wrote, quote, This didn't happen to me, but to my dad. He works for a heating and air conditioning company, so he often has to go out to people's houses to fix things. About five years ago he told me he had a bizarre dream where he went on a call to an elderly woman's house. He'd never seen the house or this woman before but he said it was bizarre because of how realistic the whole thing felt. He fixed her boiler in the dream, chatted for a bit and then left. About a week later his company gets a call from an elderly woman needing her boiler fixed. They sent my dad on the job. When he arrived he said it was the exact same house from his dream and the same old lady. He knew her name before 
before he even had to ask and knew his way around the house without having gone inside yet. When she opened the door, she said, Hi Gary, and when he asked how she already knew his name, she said she had a dream last week that her boiler broke and that my dad is the one who came to fix it, so she just knew that would be his name. Two complete strangers never having met each other had the exact same dream that they would meet each other, and they did. The whole thing is so crazy. That would be so strange, but also so cool. It's almost like they were destined to meet each other in some way. Honestly, the unexplainable can be terrifying, but it can also be kind of nice and cool and truly mystifying. All I want to know now is if Gary and the elderly woman kept in touch. Starting off this countdown, we have the deck of cards. Now, I don't know about you, but normal deck of cards don't have number one cards. In replace, they have aces. But would you look at that? This odd deck had ones, which makes me very uncomfortable. I don't know about you, but I've never seen this before. If we're playing Go Fish and you whip out a one, I'm leaving. I'm sorry. Jokes aside, we have decks with aces because they can serve as the highest card or lowest. So it can serve as a one or more than one. That's why we don't have ones, according to Google. Don't quote me. So I don't know where this person got their cards from, but it just seems wrong. In our ninth spot today, we have the knockoffs. Sometimes brand name pieces can be expensive, and we want the same or similar item, but cheaper. That's where knockoff brands come into play. Take a look at these cereals. They're so similar. Yet yeah, so different. So we got cocoa rice instead of cocoa puffs. We got honey nut crispy oats instead of honey nut Cheerios. Fruit rounds instead of fruit loops. Marshmallows and stars instead of lucky charms. Cookies instead of cookie crisp. And lastly, kids crunch instead of captain crunch. Now if I saw an aisle filled with those, I think I was transported to another universe. In our eighth spot today, we have the map. Now let's get to a serious one. In 1929, a group of historians discovered something pretty strange. It was a map from 1513 written on the skin of a gazelle. It was created by a well-known admiral of the Turkish Navy. Well, what's odd is that the map included Europe and North Africa, the coast of Brazil, several islands, and even Antarctica, which was not discovered until 300 years later. Not only that, but it was said that Antarctica was not covered in ice. The last time that occurred was more than 6,000 years ago. So this whole thing just doesn't make any sense. How did this man map a continent that's been covered by ice for the last 6,000 years? Maybe he's from a parallel universe, or maybe the map is. In our seventh spot today, we have the stop sign. Again, another item that just makes me uncomfortable. Someone decided to create a lowercase stop sign, and it looks like it's like, stop, no, just stop. Like it's too gentle. As a wise movie once said, no, 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 stick to the stuff you know. It's better by far to keep things as they are. Don't mess with the flow. Stick to the status quo. If you know what movie that's from, I automatically love you. But maybe this person was driving around in another universe. Who knows? In our sixth spot today, we have the Aumuamua artifact. Uh, hopefully I pronounced that right, because in another video I didn't, so now I'm changing the pronunciation. Let me know if I get it right, just be gentle, folks. In 2017, this object was found flying by in our solar system. Now, it's quite weird. It looks like a space rock, but it's not a comet or asteroid. It's too small and oddly shaped to be an asteroid. This thing is long. In fact, this is now the most elongated known space object. Not only that, but astronomers were shocked by the condition of it. Astronomers thought that the first space rock to enter our solar system would be a ball of ice and rocks like a comet. But this isn't one. No. Not only is it not shaped like one, but there's usually a cloud of dust and gas surrounding comets, and this object just doesn't have that. But before scientists could study it too much, it left our solar system. All we know is that the strange object came from another solar system. Or maybe a different universe. And that's why it's so weird and unlike anything we've ever seen before. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Archless McDonald's. Imagine this, okay? You're hungry, you're driving down a road, madly looking for places to stop and eat, and that's when you see it. Off in the distance, you see two golden arches, and you know exactly what awaits you. The one and only McDonald's. Except whatever universe this is in, McDonald's only has one arch. Like, hello, it's not Nick Donald's, it's Mick. So stop, okay? Or maybe someone messed up with the designing this restaurant, I don't know. 
Also, since when does McDonald's sell just bags of ice? Like look at the sign, bag of ice, one dollar. I mean it's a steal nonetheless, but still, that's odd on its own as well. In our fourth spot today we have the Ulfbert sword. Now this is something scientists like to call an out of place object. And that's because the sword dates back from around 800 to 1000 AD. Which is shocking, since they didn't have technology to make such swords back then. Swords like this were made 800 years later during the industrial revolution. Not only that, but its carbon content is three times higher than other swords of its time. It also suggested that in order to make this sword, iron ore had to have been heated to at least 3000 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? Again, they didn't have that technology to do that back then. So many people are perplexed. Well, there are a bunch of theories. One is that it was dropped by a time traveler, or two, it might have come from a parallel universe. One that is far more advanced than ours. But let me know your theory in the comments below. In our third spot today, we have Lost and Found. A number of people on Reddit have shared stories in which they have lost something only for it to reappear in a place where it's impossible to. So let me explain. So one man said that he was with his cousin at Home Depot. Before they went in, the cousin grabbed his wallet, but he didn't have any pockets, so he asked the narrator if he could put his wallet inside his pocket so that he didn't have to carry it around. He agreed and he zipped it into his track pants. After shopping around at Home Depot for a bit, they went to check out, but his wallet wasn't in the track pants. So they retraced their steps thinking maybe it fell out, but nothing. So they decided just to go back to the car and return to the store later. When they got to the car, lo and behold, the wallet was on the dashboard. Which is wild, because the cousin literally handed him the wallet and he zipped it into his pants. Now, one person believes that what happened was the universe glitched. And maybe in another reality, the man just left his wallet on the dashboard. Somehow, those universes merged, hence why the wallet was on the dash. Now, it's all confusing how this stuff works, but that's me explaining it the most basic way possible. In our second spot, we have the little dino looking figures. In 1944, thousands of little dino looking figures were dug up in Mexico. Only problem is that the pieces date back to 2500 BCE, a time when no dinosaurs were roaming around and people couldn't have possibly known about dinosaurs then. This is all according to scientists. So were there some other creatures that roamed the earth back then that we don't know of? Or is there a time traveling paleontologist out there? Imagine that, like Ross from Friends also being a time traveler, I love that. I don't know, or the object is from another universe. And in our number one spot today, we have the ring. Now this next individual has a similar story to the Home Depot boys. So for her, she was washing the dishes one day when she heard a clink in her sink. Her ring that she took off when she was doing the dishes had slipped and fell into the sink and down the drain. Now, it was just a cheap one, so she wasn't too concerned. It wasn't like her wedding ring. So she decided to just go on about her day. In the end, she forgot that the ring was even there. That was until a week later when she was putting on her shoes and felt something poking her toe. She emptied out her shoe and her ring clanked to the floor. So somehow, the ring went from being in her sink drain to in her shoe. Someone explain that to me. I don't know, maybe house elves are real. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the Hoya Bashu Forest. This dense woodland is located in the heart of Transylvania, Romania, which, as I'm sure you're well aware, already has quite the reputation for eerie and spooky things. The forest covers an area of approximately 250 hectares and is known for its unusual and unexplained occurrences, earning it the nickname the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania. How convenient. The forest is known for its twisted and gnarled trees, which create a very haunting atmosphere, as well as the strange circular patches of land that dot the area known as Hoya, which some believe to be the result of UFO activity. The forest has also been the site of many alleged paranormal events, including ghost sightings, unexplained lights and sounds, and even disappearances, which is exactly why many believe it is a portal to another world. Some visitors to the forest who didn't disappear 
year have even reported rashes, nausea, and feelings of anxiety afterwards. Despite its eerie reputation, the forest is also a place of immense natural beauty with a diverse range of flora and fauna. The forest is home to many rare and endangered species of plants and animals, including several species of orchids and woodpeckers. The forest is also rich in its history, as it is said it was once the site of a medieval fortress and was an important location during the Second World War. The area is also steeped in local folklore and legends, with stories of supernatural beings and witches who are said to dwell in the forest. All in all, this place is jam-packed with spooky stories, strange occurrences, and beautiful but haunting scenery. All the things that make it the perfect place to enter another world. In our number 9 spot today, we have the real Bermuda Triangle, not the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania. The Bermuda Triangle is really just the mecca when it comes to mysterious disappearances and rumors and urban legends, so of course it had to make it onto this list today. The Triangle, which sits in between Florida, Puerto Rico, and Bermuda, earned its deadly reputation starting back in the 1970s. Since then, there has been about 80 aircrafts and 60 boats that have gone missing in the Triangle, which only fueled rumors that there was some sort of force or supernatural cause that was making this area one where people would often go missing. There have been intense electrical forces and tunnel-like clouds reported in the triangle, which some may believe is the cause of the disappearances. Some others believe it's weather patterns. Some believe it's the entrance to a parallel universe or a place where aliens like to abduct their victims. And some people just like to dismiss the idea that there's any sort of mystery at all. At this point, exactly what is going on with the Bermuda Triangle remains a mystery. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Oregon Vortex. Just off of Interstate 5 in Southern Oregon lies what is called the Oregon Vortex. According to local legend, it is said that this area and the strange and mysterious stories surrounding it aren't just modern legends, but perhaps it stems back further. People have said that the stories of the Oregon Vortex actually stem back to when indigenous Americans referred to it as the Forbidden Land. It is said that during these times, people traveling on horses would often find their horses refusing to go into the area. So clearly, something strange was going on in there that was spooking these animals right out. Scientists have speculated that the land might contain some kind of crossed magnetic lines that produce basically like a force field, but whatever it really is, the place is truly strange. Things appear very differently here. It's sort of like everything is an optical illusion. The area is basically a parallel universe in itself. In our number 7 spot today, we have Socotra Island. Socotra Island is a remote island located in the Arabian Sea, about 240 kilometers east of the Horn of Africa and 380 kilometers south of the Arabian Peninsula, and it has been described as, quote, the most alien looking place on Earth. It is a part of Yemen and is known for its unique and otherworldly qualities, as well as its rare and endemic plant and animal species. In fact, so many species here are endemic that up to a third of its plant life isn't found anywhere else on Earth. The landscape of Socotra is strikingly surreal, with towering limestone cliffs, deep caves, and white sand beaches. The island is home to unusual rock formations and the infamous dragon blood trees. This strange looking umbrella shaped tree have a red sap inside of them, which is thought to be the dragon's blood of the ancients. In addition to its natural wonders, Socotra has a rich cultural heritage with a mix of African, Arabian, and South Asian influences. The island's inhabitants, the Socotri people, have a unique language and a way of life that has been preserved for centuries. Overall, this island is just truly otherworldly, and it offers a glimpse into a world unlike any other with the island's landscape being compared to that of a science fiction movie set. In our number 6 spot today, we have Salar de Uni. Salar de Uni is the world's largest salt flat located in the southwest of Bolivia near the crest of the Andes. The area spans over 10,000 square kilometers and is characterized by a stunning otherworldly landscape. This peculiar place was formed by the evaporation of a prehistoric lake, leaving behind a thick layer of salt crust that stretches as far as the eye can see. During the rainy season, the salt flat becomes a giant mirror reflecting the sky and clouds in a breathtaking spectacle. It is truly unbelievable. It looks completely fake and is somehow super real. The unique terrain and climate of the area has also given rise to many unusual natural formations. The flat is dotted with small islands of rock and gigantic cacti, which serve as a haven for a variety of animal species. Yes, I said giant cacti. While this place is mostly devoid of life, plant or animal, that is safe for these cacti that can grow 
out to be 12 meters or 39 feet tall. The area is also home to many active geysers and hot springs, as well as colorful lakes that are filled with flamingos during certain times of the year. In fact, in November, this place becomes a feeding ground for three South American species of flamingo feeding on local brine shrimps. These are the Chilean, Andean, and rare James flamingos. Aside from its natural wonders, Salar de Uni is also rich in cultural history. The area has been inhabited by the indigenous Aymara people for thousands of years, and they have maintained their traditional way of life and culture to this day. In our number 5 spot today, we have the Challenger Deep. The Challenger Deep is the deepest known point in our ocean, around 10,900 meters deep. It is located in the Pacific Ocean in the southern part of the Mariana Trench, and because of its location, lack of light, and immense pressure, it hasn't been explored very much. The extreme environment is certainly set up for there to be a whole host of species that we know absolutely nothing about, but it is not an area that can be easily explored by humans. The Challenger Deep has only been visited four times, and only for short periods of time, so there is so much more that is waiting to be uncovered at this deep, dark part of our ocean. And I don't know about you, but I feel like there are crazy amounts of ocean creatures that could fully be aliens. They are so strange and interesting and unique. So who in the world knows what really lurks down there? In our number four spot today, we have East Scotia Ridge. In the Southern Ocean, about 2,400 meters down, you'll find this biological community or habitat that was discovered in 2012. East Scotia Ridge is a remote underwater mountain range located between South Georgia Island and the Antarctic Peninsula. The ridge is known for its unique and very mysterious geology, as well as its diverse marine life and harsh environment. It is dark down there, but it is also hot as it is being warmed by hydrothermal vents, and it can reach temperatures up to 382 degrees Celsius, which is absolutely insane. Because of this dark, hot environment, of course we are going to find a whole bunch of new species that were previously unknown to us. Some of these species include a new kind of albino octopus, and also albino hairy lobster that's referred to as a yeti lobster, and apparently even a crab that uses its hair to grow a bacteria that detoxifies the water. Okay? Parallel universe, that's what I'm saying. In our number three spot today, we have the Paris Catacombs. The catacombs in Paris are some of the most famous in the world. This is a place that holds the remains of more than six million people, and it's also the source of an insane amount of urban spooky legends. This ossuary was created originally in an effort to eliminate the overflowing of the city cemeteries. To be honest, this place, after being built, was mostly forgotten, but during the 19th century, it became a novelty place for concerts and private events, which is certainly macabre. After some renovations and construction, they became open to the public in 1874, and they have been the source of much mystery ever since. These catacombs are expansive, with most of them being blocked off to the public, which begs the question, why? In 2009, there is said to have been a video camera discovered inside the catacombs with footage that showed an unidentified man dropping the camera in fear of something that's also unidentified before running away into complete darkness. I'm just saying, although the catacombs sees a ton of visitors every year, I'm not convinced that we know all of what's going on down there. And I don't want to know. Keep your secrets. In our number two spot today, we have the Moval Cave. This cave is located in Romania, just a few kilometers from the coast of the Black Sea, and it was first discovered in 1986. This cave has been isolated from the outside world for millions of years, and basically everything that goes on inside of it is different than what we are used to. The cave life is not based on photosynthesis and rather chemosynthesis. The level of oxygen in the cave is around a third of what is normally found in the atmosphere, and of the 48 species found in the cave, 33 three of them were endemic to just the cave. This cave looks absolutely terrifying, but thank goodness for the brave scientists who don't let that get in the way, because as scary as it looks, it is just as, if not more, amazing to be able to hear about what exactly this cave holds. In our number one spot today, we have the Zhangjiajie National Forest Park. This stunning nature reserve is located in the Hunan province of China, and it spans over 11,000 hectares, and is known for its towering sandstone pillars and breathtaking natural scenery. The park is characterized by 
its unique and otherworldly landscapes, which includes thousands of the tall sandstone pillars that rise up from the ground. The pillars are often shrouded in mist, creating a very mystical and surreal atmosphere. Visitors can explore the park's many hiking trails, which wind through dense forests and lead to stunning lookout points, including the famous Avatar Hallelujah Mountain that inspired the scenery in the film Avatar. You too can visit Pandora right here on Earth. The area is also home to a diverse range of flora and fauna, including many rare and endangered species. Aside from the natural, this is also a spot rich in history, as it was once the home to many ancient temples and shrines located within the park. The area has been inhabited for over 3,000 years, and visitors can explore many historic sites and learn about the region's rich cultural heritage. Overall, this National Forest Park is a truly spectacular destination that combines natural beauty, cultural history, and a sense of awe and wonder that is sure to leave visitors feeling as though they went to another world. In our number 10 spot we have Chick-fil-A. There is something called the Mandela Effect that is a term that was invented to describe a situation where a large group of people remember a situation different than how it is. But of course, if you brought an entire human race into a new dimension, how else are you going to explain how so many people remember different events and situations that happened to the ones they're being presented with now? Naturally, you would invent a term to convince everyone into believing that their memories are false and what they remember was influenced by a common eye trick or a memory trick. Like in the case of Chick-fil-A. A large group of people remember the famous restaurant without a K. I am one of those people actually. When doing my research on this, I thought the incorrect spelling was with the K. But in fact, Chick-fil-A always had a K apparently. The thing that nobody can question me on specifically is a memory I have of looking at a Chick-fil-A sign and thinking, as a kid, why isn't there a K? So take that government, that's a very specific thought memory that you can't influence. Who else remembers it without a K? Let me know in the comment section below. In our number 9 spot we have Skechers. This is another label that has been questioned over the last few years by many, and it has also been attributed to the Mandela Effect. Most people agree that the brand Skechers spells their name S-K-E-T-C-H-E-R-S. -E but actually in this reality, okay fine, perhaps maybe just in reality in general, who knows, the brand is spelt S-K-E-C-H-E-R-S. -E there is apparently no T. This is another situation where I personally remember it being spelt with a T. When I was younger, I remember writing about it in a report for school and I did not know how to spell it. I remember sounding it out and then when I looked it up, I was surprised that it had a silent T. Somebody explain this memory, please. You cannot convince me that it is Skechers with no T. It just doesn't look right. I wonder at what age do people start thinking that there is no T? That'll give us a good idea as to when we got transported into a new dimension. In our number 8 spot we have the Torrid Traveler. I had to include this story in here as it is such a wonder as to why it is not talked about more. Does the government not want people to talk about this for a reason? Possibly. In 1954, there was a man who was traveling to Tokyo, Japan when he got off the plane in Tokyo and was pulled aside by security for having a passport from a country that didn't exist. The customs officials grilled the man on why he had a fake passport and fake custom papers, and annoyed, he insisted that his passport and papers were real. He supposedly had all kinds of bank statements and documents from a country in Europe called Torrid. The police pointed to an actual country called Andorra, and apparently the man insisted that yes, that is where his country is, but it is called Torrid, and it's been around for thousands of years. The man was held in a hotel for several hours while the government analyzed his papers. The next morning when the government went into the hotel room to speak with him, he had vanished back to his parallel universe, I think. In our number 7 spot we have the case of Lorena Garcia. This is a very interesting story. I definitely think it is possible that this story was covered up as it is a story that a lot of people do not know of and may be shocked to hear about. A woman by the name of Lorena Garcia woke up one morning to find that nothing was familiar to her. Her home, her friends, her job, she did not recognize a thing. She still looked like herself and had the same name, but her room and basically everything was different. The story made a few newspapers, but it eventually 
died. As it would, of course, if it is a story that a lot of people shouldn't hear about so that we don't all start collectively putting the pieces together and questioning everything, as we probably would. People thought that she suffered from memory loss, however all signs actually pointed to her being in perfect health, as well as nothing traumatic had occurred that would make anyone believe that theory. So. In conclusion, she probably slipped into a parallel dimension that the government didn't want us to know about. In our number 6 spot we have the Backwards Universe. An experiment was done by NASA's Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna or ANITA. ANITA darling. <laughs> A little 101 Dalmatians reference for ya. Gosh, I get distracted so easily. <laughs> An experiment was performed high above Antarctica where it was observed that there is a constant wind of high energy particles coming up from the Earth, and these findings showed scientists that these particles actually traveled backwards in time, which suggests a parallel universe. Quote Low energy subatomic neutrinos with a mass close to zero can pass completely through Earth, but high Higher energy objects are stopped by the solid matter of our planet, according to this report. That means the high energy particles can only be detected coming down from space, but the team's ANITA detected heavier particles, so called tau neutrinos, which come up out of the Earth. Is this proof of another backwards dimension? Some scientists, such as Peter Gorham, believe it is possible. In our number 5 spot we have Star Wars. Luke, I am your father. <laughs> okay, this one could very well have been misconstrued over time as people have repeated this in many movies and it's possible that someone somewhere just decided to throw in the Luke bit so that people understood which character Vader was the father of. Makes sense, but still in online platforms people are convinced that at some point in time Darth Vader said Luke, I am your father instead of what is actually said I am your your father. No Luke. Is this a sign that in another universe Luke was actually said? I don't know. This is a bit of a weak sign for me, but others disagree. Would love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Did the government cover this one up? <laughs> in our number 4 spot we have the Triangle Phenomena. The Bermuda Triangle, the Alaskan Triangle, the Nevada Triangle. These are all strange places that puzzle people around the world. These are places where planes and people have gone missing on many accounts. It could be a strange coincidence, but a lot of people believe that these disappearances are more likely a sign of a portal to another dimension. Perhaps these people and planes traveled through these portals and ended up somewhere else, as not a body or piece of the planes have ever been found from any of these places. There has to be some explanation. Either that, or it's a government special operation, or there's mythical creatures getting in the way. There are so many theories around these triangles, but the number one theory is that they are a sign of a parallel universe. In our number three spot we have unidentified objects. Over the years there have been a lot of unidentified objects that have popped up around the world that no one can explain. Archaeologists have discovered items that don't belong in areas that they are exploring and at times there have even been objects that don't seem like they are a part of this world or from this world. A good example of this is a hammer that was found in London in the 1930s and this hammer is said to be over 500 million years old. Wow, when humans weren't known to exist. There was also an object that was found that is a sort of stone like computer that would have been from 2000 years ago and this object was found near a Greek island not too long ago. Many people believe these mysterious objects are traveling through dimensions and that they are a huge sign that there are universes that we are unaware of. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. In our number 2 spot we have Area 51. Look, it is no secret that Area 51 is the most unusual place and it is probably one of the most guarded places in the world. But why? The government's explanation is that it's a secret army operation place. Sure, okay. If we wanted to plan future attacks or train for future wars, we will definitely need a secret place to do those things. So that's a pretty good reason and that's why it's believable to your average Joe that doesn't bother to look into it any further. But for the person that decides to look into some of the stories that surround Area 51, man, are there many they might think otherwise. The most popular theory is that there is a parallel universe portal inside as people in the surrounding area have reported disappearing and showing up in random locations. 
science. In our number one spot, we have the particle test. There is a large hadron collider that is the largest and highest particle collider and is 27 kilometers below the surface of the Earth, aka in an underground facility between the France Switzerland border. It was originally designed between 1998 and 2008 by CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research. As a collaboration project between 10,000 scientists and hundreds of labs and universities from over a hundred different countries. It is believed that the purpose of this device was to create a black hole in reality which may take us to a parallel universe. Regardless of what they were actually doing, they did stumble across something pretty crazy. Apparently the scientists threw a bunch of particles around at crazy speeds and noticed that the particles disappeared for a moment and they were able to measure how long the particles disappeared for. From this experiment, it has been assumed that the particles traveled to new dimensions or planes of existence when they disappeared. One of the scientists at CERN by the name of Aurelian Barrow has even said, the multiverse is no longer a model. It is a consequence of our models. Well, sounds like proof to me. The government's gotta do a better job at hiding this. <laughs> Coming up at our number 10 spot, we have cosmic inflation. The first half of this list is going to be some scientific explanations for parallel universes, but don't worry, the science won't get that complicated because then I wouldn't be able to understand it either. <laughs> first, let's start off by talking about the theory of eternal inflation. This is the idea that ever since the Big Bang, the universe has been rapidly expanding or inflating, and different parts of the universe have been inflating at different rates. This means that there are some sections of the universe that haven't really connected up with the rest, yet creating a sort of bubble universe. While our own universe has inflated enough to breed galaxies and stars and, and physics and science and whatever else, these other bubble universes are still in the process of creation. They have the potential to be the exact same two hours, or completely different from ours. Or maybe there is a you in one bubble universe that didn't get that bad haircut that you still really regret. One time, my mom cut my hair like Marilyn Monroe. It was brutal. Coming up at our number nine spot, we have mathematical constants. Similar to that theory is the fact that everything in our known universe can be explained with mathematical equations. Think the Pythagorean theorem. Scientists know that the structure of our universe can be broken down into our mathematical structure. Math, that is, as they call it, without human baggage. They believe that because of this, it is entirely possible to hypothesize that there are other universes out there that are based around different mathematical structures, each universe having their own laws and rules based off of the structure. So infinite mathematical structures means infinite universes, some being just slightly different and some being totally, completely different. Coming up in our number eight spot, we have backwards universe. Two years ago, in 2020, NASA discovered what they believe is evidence of a parallel universe, one that is more than a little bit different to ours. Their team called Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna, or ANITA, had been working on an experiment in, of course, Antarctica for a few years. A so-called cosmic ray detection experiment reportedly found particles that seemed to come from another universe, one that was also created when the Big Bang took place. While this evidence alone is pretty astounding, they also discovered that the particles appeared to be moving in reverse, leading them to believe that they had found evidence of a parallel universe where time moves backwards. While parallel universes are often just the work of science fiction and movies, we may be closer to finding the truth of the situation than we originally thought. In our number seven spot today, we have observable universe. Now let's talk about what scientists believe about the shape of space. In your head, maybe you imagine a big sphere or even some sort of donut, but most likely it's actually flat. And it stretches out infinitely, like forever, never ending. And if it goes on forever, then at some point it has to start repeating because there is a finite number of ways that particles can be arranged within space and time. So if you looked far enough, you would eventually find another version of you, maybe wearing a different shirt or eating something different for breakfast. Maybe a version of you that didn't watch this far in the video, but hey, we like this version of you better anyways. <laughs> 
Unfortunately, it would be pretty hard to actually see this far down the universe because our observable universe only extends 13.7 billion light years, this being the amount of time light has had to travel since the Big Bang. So you can consider the space beyond our observable universe to be its own sort of separate universe, one that we just can't see yet and probably won't for a long time. If ever. In our number six spot, we have time travel. Think about time travel for a second. Maybe you thought of Back to the Future. The concept of this movie is that if you go back in time and change one small thing, it can completely alter the future. Some scientists believe that time travel is a definite possibility in our future. So if it is, why haven't we seen anybody come back yet? And have they been screwing around and messing things up? Well, it's theorized that due to the way they would alter the universe, when time travel travelers go back in time, they actually create their own separate universe where things change. A parallel universe that works to include them in it. That would explain why we have never seen any real evidence of time travelers coming back to our current time, or even any point in the past. Because they did not travel back in time in our universe, but instead to their own unique one. Am I melting your brain yet? Let's move on to some simpler stuff. In our number five spot, we have different life. For the second half of our list, we are going to be stepping away from science and taking a look at some people's stories of their experiences with glitches in the matrix that may lend evidence to there being parallel or multiple universes. One day, a man was in his house when he became overcome with the urge to go outside and stand on his lawn. For a moment, he said he had the clearest feeling ever before he felt a slight wobble and everything began feeling slightly distorted. When it was over and he turned to go back inside, he saw his car in the driveway, the same make and model, but a different colored car. But that wasn't the only thing that was different. When he saw his wife, he said that she definitely looked like his wife, but he just had this feeling that she was different. He also started having memories that weren't his and seeing buildings that you know there was no way he could have never noticed in his time living there, entire departments from his work no longer existing. Is it possible this man jumped to a parallel universe where his life was only slightly different? Maybe. In our number four spot, we have wrong memory. This one is a story of a false memory, seeming like an intense version of the Mandela effect. The Mandela effect being when a large group of people all share a false memory of something, which we mentioned in detail on the previous list. This person says that they vividly remember someone they know dying in a car accident, texting and driving and going off an exit ramp that was still under construction. They remember themselves and their family and friends attending the funeral and everyone in their small town talking about it for weeks. Skip to 10 years later, even the person's fiance knew about it and knew the person's name because of how many times they had told the story. One day their fiance is looking at their sister's Facebook page and says, hey, isn't that the girl who died? The person came over to look and it turns out that it was. Apparently also no one in the town after this incident had any memory of the car accident or the funeral that took place afterwards. So did this person potentially have a memory from a parallel universe where the accident had taken place? It's possible. Coming up in our number three spot, we have disembodied voice. People who believe strongly in multiverses and parallel universes usually believe that there are some places and occasions where the gaps between our universes are thinner, and it is easier for things to cross over or for the universes to communicate with each other. This story seems like one of those moments where the barrier was thin. When this person was around the age of 10, they were going to the beach with their aunt and friends when they were divided between two different cars. One of the cars didn't know the directions, so they were following behind the other car. When Suddenly, it took a sharp turn and they had to follow and do the same, going around a very sharp bend. Suddenly, they all heard a very loud, clear voice in the car saying, sharp bend, hmm? The driver of the car hit the brakes as they all looked at each other confused, confirming there was no one else in the car that had said that. There wasn't even anyone close by outside the car who could have said it. So maybe it was someone managing to speak through the thin barrier between the universes? Or was it a ghost? You decide. In our number two spot, we have the motorcycle crash. Sometimes people experience situations where the impossible seems to happen and maybe it is impossible, but only in our 
current universe. This person told their story of a death defying crash. Six years ago, they were riding through town on a motorcycle going about 45 miles per hour. Suddenly, a woman who hadn't seen them turned left out in front of them, and despite the short amount of time, they remembered thinking about their options whether they should go over or under the car. They laid the bike down and slid underneath the car diagonally. They slid across the pavement, no helmet, no jacket, just jeans and a hoodie. They slid about 80 feet before they stopped and were then able to stand up. No injuries, except a hole in their sweater, their bike having been completely mangled and torn apart. They knew that there was no way that they should have survived the crash, but somehow they did. A potential glitch in the matrix of the universe? Possibly. In our number one spot, we have takeout. Have you ever heard of Schrodinger's cat? Me either. <laughs> the idea that if you put a cat inside a box with a bottle of poison, the cat is in a state of being both living and dead until you open the box and find out. Well, it turns out that you know the food you ordered last night, your takeout, is also in a state of being your order and not your order until you open it up and find out. A man and his friend went to a Chinese restaurant where they ordered a chicken dinner and a shrimp dinner. When they received their boxes and opened them both, they realized that they had received two shrimp dinners. No big deal, just a mix up. So they close the boxes and get ready to go ask for a replacement. But before they do, the friend opens the first box again and instead of the shrimp dinner they had clearly seen before, it was now a chicken dinner, what they had originally ordered. They knew what they had both clearly seen. Was it possible that for a few seconds they had received their lunch from a parallel universe where they had ordered something else? Maybe. In our number 10 spot, we have the tree hopper. I don't usually love insects, so this one just gives me the creeps to talk about. The tree hopper has over 3,000 plus separate species, and each one has a specific look that helps them blend into their environment. The tree hopper can be recognized by their vertical face and enlarged thorax, has a helmet that is tough and hard and comes in different shapes and sizes. They are usually about a half an inch in size. They eat liquid from plant stems and and as you can imagine, are always found in trees, but in warmer parts of the world. They are sometimes referred to as insect brownies. And that, once again, makes me feel alone in the world, because just why? <laughs> they are bugs, not food. Just no. But fun fact that actually makes them kind of cool, tree hoppers actually secrete honeydew. So I guess that's kind of cool. Number nine, the red-lipped batfish. Yep, a lot of words in that one name right off the hop. The red-lipped batfish, I gotta say, I'm a fan of the look. The red lipstick, she looks like she's ready for a night out on the fish town. But don't let those looks deceive you folks. Hiding in the depths of the Galapagos, these batfish can grow up to 10 inches long. And the defining feature here, obviously, besides their lips are their feet. Yeah, these bad fish have pectoral fins that allow them to walk on the ocean floor. Yeah, walking on the floor. A fish walking on the floor with lipstick on. What's going on here? Because they belong in the same family as an anglerfish, the red-lipped batfish also has an elysium on its head in order to attract prey. It's got like a clown nose thing almost. I want to just go honk. I really want to pop it. I know I can't, but I want to try. I'm not a fan of deep sea fish, or any fish really for that matter, so this one absolutely creeps me out. I'm also not a fan of clowns. This fish checks a lot of those boxes, so I'm heading out. Coming up in our number eight spot, we have the axolotl. There is much speculation as to how to pronounce the name of this creature, but for the most part, most people believe that it is axolotl. But another one that I have to kind of admit that it sort of looks cute, but if I saw it in person, I would probably be terrified. Also, another alien looking creature. Did we just base our alien images and movies off of these kinds of creatures? Known to be usually brown, black, sometimes greenish, and white, but the white ones are bred in captivity. Apparently the white ones are long descendants of a mutant version of the male back in the 1800s. They were from then on bred to be white with black eyes. These creatures are actually very endangered. They are usually found in lakes and in canals in Mexico. What looks like little baby fine hairs on their head are actually gills. So cool. They eat small worms and fish. They also have the superpower to regenerate their jaws spines, limbs, and get this, even their brains. Whoa, arguably the coolest superpower I've ever come across in an animal. Number seven, stonefish. 
Yeah, this next one is great at disguising itself as a rock. So when it comes to deadly ocean life, that's just what you wanna hear. Nice, good game, folks. The stonefish is spiny, it's ugly, it looks medieval almost. Each of its 13 spines are all filled with deadly venom. So if you're taking a late night skinny dip, yeah, keep an eye out for any blinking rocks. Let's avoid that entire area. These fish look angry, they have John Wick eyes. They're on a mission, something's going on in their soul. Its venom is very lethal to humans. So if you're watching from Australia, I implore you to wear steel toe boots next time you go to the beach. Stonefish don't use their venom to hunt. They only shoot venom out of their spines. If pressure is applied to them, that's worse than anything. The odds of accidentally stepping on one of these guys is significantly higher than any other fish. Because, like I said, they look like rocks that blink. Remind me to never swim in the ocean again, or just go to Australia for that matter. In our number six spot, we have the star-nosed mole. Somebody convinced me that this isn't an alien. How is this a real creature from our planet? Being the creature of everyone's nightmares, the star-nosed mole has quite the positive sounding name, like extremely unfitting in my opinion. I would name it the spider face mole. Is that not more appropriate? All jokes aside, the star-nosed mole actually has its own record for being the world's fastest eater, as it is said that it can eat an insect in a quarter of a second. Its star, or spider-like face in my opinion, is actually an organ, and it has over 100,000 nerve fibers, which makes it one of the most sensitive organs on any mammal to touch. The star-nosed mole is found living in the wetlands just along the coast of the US from Canada to Georgia. They are actually known to be blind, but they have mastered their senses and they can swim and smell underwater. Most of their life is spent hunting their prey underground and they usually live about two to three years. Number five, the blue dragon. This one sounds like it's from a different time, let alone a different universe, oh my god. The blue dragon, aka the Glocus Atlanticus. First of all, it looks like it's from Pandora. This thing is bright blue. It's a blue sea slug. Believe it or not, it's a gastropod that just decided, you know what, I'm too cool for a shell. Don't need it. And to be fair, when you store poison in your fingertips, you don't need to hide, right? The sea slug can often be found in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Ocean. They favor tropical waters, obviously, who doesn't? And they literally adapt to survive. They eat Portuguese man o' war, these deadly jellyfish looking siphonophores, and during this process while feeding, blue dragons will literally absorb and then store its prey's cnidocytes. They will take its toxins from them and then store them in these small sacks. Yeah, they're literally stealing from you. So you never know what kind of venom is being held at the time. Yeah, they steal your loot. How rude is that? You could poke one and be like, oh, poison, see ya. In our number four spot, we have the pink fairy armadillo. Okay, this creature looks like it belongs in a fairy universe and clearly its namers would agree. If I were to be an ugly creature, there's no way I would choose anything but to be a pink ugly creature. Way too many people online call this terrifying creature cute. And now I'm sure the world has gone insane. Also, I'm just not a fan of armadillos, so I'm biased. The pink fairy armadillo grows to be about 2.5 to 4.5 inches long. It can weigh up to four ounces and they can live up to 10 years. They're usually found in central Argentina in grasslands, plains, and dunes. They love to eat plants, worms, and insects. They protect themselves by curling into a ball. They have pretty silky yellowish white fur and what looks like pink armor is actually just blood vessels under its armor. Hmm. They have been so hard to find, so scientists haven't spent much time studying them to date, probably because they're jumping back into their fairy world dimension every now and then. Number three, Brood X Cicadas. Okay, this one sounds like a Marvel villain, Brood X Cicadas. Hold on to your butts for this one, really. This one is absolutely insane. Over the past couple of years, billions of cicadas came from the ground all over the United States for the first time in 17 years. They were just underground waiting for so long. At the same time, they all just came out and surprised us all. Thing is, they just happened to be born with a fungus made of the same chemical found in poisonous mushrooms. So they didn't have a great time. Yeah, they were a little confused. They didn't feel too hot. The fungus ate away at their bodies, so much so that their butts literally would fall off. They would fall off, they would lose their butts because white spores are pushing them off at this point. These cicadas don't even know what they're doing. They're calling this a zombie virus for bugs. 
Yeah, more than fair, their ass is falling off. But you can't say that now, can you? What's really happening here is a process called massospora. These poor things just want to mate and move on, but now both males and females are making cicada catcalls. So their whole system is now ruined, all because of this fungus. These cicadas aren't a threat to humans, thankfully, but their tragic summer of 2021 is definitely worth mentioning. We had a bad 2020, cicadas, and 2021. We're sharing, sharing is caring. Coming up in our number two spot, we have the California leaf-nosed bat. It's hard to imagine that this extremely cute but also terrifying creature exists, so it must be from a parallel dimension. That's all I can conclude. This creature is of course a part of the bat species, but it has one big distinguishing feature that makes you think that it should be a species of its own. It has Dumbo-like ears. Yes, I'm referring to the Disney movie Dumbo, where the elephant has abnormally large ears that end up acting as propellers and give him the ability to fly. Bats can already fly, so sadly his ears are seemingly pointless to me. What's the point of having big ears if they don't help you fly, is all I'm saying. They are also known to have leaf-looking growths on their nose. They live in caves and mines in the deserts of the US and Mexico. They eat grasshoppers, beetles, moths, and crickets. Their ears are about 1 to 1.5 inches in length each, and they don't usually migrate because their wings are too short and broad for traveling long distances. Would love to know if you think the idea of a big eared bat hitting you in the face would be terrifying or cute. Let me know in the comment section below. Number one, bulldog rat. Recently at Most Amazing, we've covered projects that are aiming to bring back extinct animals. That's kind of fun. The Lazarus Project aims to bring back extinct woolly mammoths. Yeah, we can see them return in the next eight or nine years, which is terrifying but exciting, science-wise. That's lovely. Let's save animals, sure. As long as we don't bring back the bulldog rat, I'm happy. Of course, being way larger than black rats, the bulldog rat was thankfully last seen around 1903. The same time speed walking was introduced to the world. It's because everyone was booking at home because of these things. That's, that's my personal theory right there. They have two to three centimeters of fat on their backs. So disgusting, with short tails and thick hair. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing holly or jolly about the bulldog rat, except for the fact that its home was once that of Christmas Island in the Indian Ocean. They were thriving until sailors discovered said island, and they brought with them infected black rats. So it was like West Side Story, but like rat version, it was crazy. So when they pulled up to the island, Christmas Island, they brought with them all these rats, and then they riddled everyone with disease. So it took less than a year to wipe out an entire rat species. Honestly, I'm okay with that. I don't like rats at all. If you're a rat person, sorry. Cool tricks, but nope. 